that's the second time. I've pricked myself. Oh, look, Father, look. I shall be weak for days. I shouldn't be doing this. It's bad for the posture to sit like this all day. If only she wouldn't fidget so, she'd find it much easier. It's no good thinking you can comfort her beauty. She'd be sulking for days. No doubt she'll be out again when she gets tired of her own company. Oh, Father, there must be something we can do. I know. Why don't we sell the quilts we make? We could take them to the chateau at Montpierre. They have hundreds of rooms there, and I often visit Madame Bouchamp. She would be happy to take some from us. It's been a cold winter, and some of the rooms could probably do with an extra blanket. Never! Do you hear me, Beauty? I shan't have anybody knowing that we have to sell what we make to get money. If you breathe a word of what I'm doing, I'll never forgive you. Oh, oh Beauty, don't blame them. They won't be happy unless we return to our old lifestyle. They can see no good of us living here. We must be patient with them. They'll adapt in time. Before disaster befell me, they were always happy because they had everything they wanted. But now, we must all learn to be grateful for even what little we have. I hope one day your sisters will understand that it's happiness that really matters, not money. There are many more people who have less than us. Oh, beauty, what have I done? How could I have better prepared myself? I should have protected myself against highwaymen. It's not as if I hadn't heard. It's just that I never thought it would happen to me. I vow that in future, I shall always carry a pistol with me. <laughs> oh, father, whatever shall you think of next? Imagine you taking a pistol to protect yourself from a highwayman. You're no fighter, Father. We should be grateful your life was spared. Anyway, it's not as if we've lost everything. You can still work. Monsieur Renard has said he would like you to work for him. As you know, he has opened a new shop. The fact that he is independently wealthy has meant that he can continue in business, despite losing a considerable amount of money when we were robbed by the highwayman. I know you were partners before, and it would be very different working for Monsieur Renard with him as your employer. But you worked well together, even if you did end up losing everything. You're a good daughter, Beauty. Generous and understanding. It's simply that... I spent months preparing the designs and making the jewelry that has been stolen. And now I have to start all over again. No one knew about my journey, except Monsieur Renard and his assistant. Oh, that evil Monsieur Rodant. There is something very strange about him, Father. Now, Beauty, you are not giving the gentleman the respect due to him. But I just feel there's something... Now, Beauty, I know you're headstrong, but I want you to promise me that you won't say anything. Oh, Father, as if I would. We are truly blessed to have a countryside as beautiful as this. Why, with the snow on the ground, the blue sky above, this looks almost like heaven. Philippe, mon ami, Monsieur Dubois' former home. Notice the exquisite grounds, the novel architecture, the air of grandeur. Oh, why, things have certainly changed for them, I can assure you of that. And all because my dear cousin was held up by a highwayman. And he did so love his rose garden. Well, I say, you must be pleased you were born into the wealthy side of your family, rather than that poor cousin of yours. It seems to be such a burden. Well, 
Rodor, I will not have you showering me every time you speak to me. Do me the favor of addressing that problem of yours. We approach Monsieur Dubois. Let us prepare ourselves. <laughs> Cousin, cousin, greetings. I must say you look markedly better. Why, last time I saw you, you looked like a broken baguette. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, uh, having lost everything. Thank you for your kind words. But come, and welcome. Let us go inside. It's much warmer. Cousin, I have come here today to make you a proposition. As you know, the business we ran together has failed since your unfortunate experience. We have both lost everything we invested in the company. It really was the most tragic event. All those pieces of jewelry. Well, anyway, thanks to my substantial family funds, I have been able to set up a new company that is doing rather well. Now, I cannot offer you a partnership, but mm. I would like to offer you a position as our chief designer and jewelry maker. No doubt you are aware that I could go to any one of the famous Paris jewelers, but I have come to you because you are family. I want you to design and make our jewelry. But father must be one of the best light jewelry designers in France, not just Paris. Indeed, indeed. And it is for this reason as well I would like him to join my company. Cousin, we have been partners for many years, and we have both done well. And it is on the strength of our past working relationship that I would now like to offer you a position within the company. As you are aware, <laughs> You have no money, but we would like you to join the business and offer you a reasonable wage and 2% of all profits. I don't know what to say. Your offer is most generous. I could not have hoped for better. Cousin. Not so fast. There is one tiny condition to my offer. As you know, I have for some time admired beauty. And with my offer to you of a position in the new company, I shall insist upon the hand of beauty in marriage. Oh, your offer, Monsieur Renard, is very generous, but I need a few days to think about it. I do not wish to be hasty with such a decision. Of course not. That is only to be expected. Perhaps you would be better suited to Lucinda Prunella. Uh, no, no, no. I cannot compromise for that. Only one of your daughters has stolen my heart. It must be beauty or nothing. And I feel it only fair to point out to you that without beauty, the position in the company cannot uh, be yours. I'm sure you can understand. So be it. Come, Rodon. We have other business to attend. Oh, beauty. Whatever will become of us. His offer is really most generous. Really, Father, you're being much too understanding. Why, they live a life equally comfortable to the one they had before. Do not forget, Monsieur Renard inherited everything from your grandfather's estate. You mustn't be too trusting. Things are not always what they seem. 
Well, nonetheless, his offer of marriage should not be taken lightly. You know I have no dowry to offer when you wish not to marry. But does that matter? Surely now, any man I choose to marry will do so because he loves me, not because I'm wealthy. Well, nonetheless, his offer of marriage should not be taken lightly. He is a reasonable businessman, and he will be able to support you in a manner far greater than I. I can appreciate he is a little older Oh, Father, you. I have no intention of marrying anyone at the moment, thank you. Unless, of course, the handsome prince comes along. A charming prince. Have we one coming to dinner? Oh, Prunella, you're so funny. Well, I can't see why. I merely inquired if we had the good fortune of entertaining some respectable people for a change, instead of the gardener and other such humble folk as the <laughs> sister. I, quite frankly, can see no cause for laughter. There was a time when we could quite happily entertain princes and dukes and noble persons. Why, I could have had the pick of any man I chose. I think, dear sister, you are suffering from a form of delusion. Your looks have never attracted the men you wished them to attract. Why, you... How, how could you say such a thing? All of my suitors have come from the most noble of backgrounds. Yes, sister, but I think you have misunderstood. They may well have come from wealthy backgrounds, but their looks have left much to be desired. Upon my word, you can be so horrid. Honestly. Since when have looks been of such importance? Since the fall of the family, Beauty. <laughs> <laughs> you may well laugh, Beauty, but just wait until you are a few years older and marriage becomes of importance to you. Beauty shall be mine. That I am sure. Monsieur Dubois, for all his brilliance in design, has no business sense. He cannot fail to take up my thoughtful offer. Yes. And then we shall have France's most artistic designer from our lot left. Then we have had in the past. <sighs> Isn't it just splendid when things work according to plan? Yes. Though perhaps we should be a little less hasty in assuming beauty will join in with our celebration. Mm, yes, you are right, but I am sure she will. Her father's happiness is important to her. Father, you look so worried. Is there anything I can do? No, thank you, Beauty. But after much thought, I have come to a decision as to what to do. I have decided to sell the rose brooch <gasps> I made for your dear mother. She loved it so, but I know also that she would want us to sell it now when we need the money. No, Father. You've always sworn you would never sell that piece. You know how precious it is to you and all of us. We can find another way to make money. I'm sure we can. She loved it so. But I know also that she would want us to sell it now. Then wait until you have some new designs and take those to the jewelers rather than your rose brooch. Beauty, I have thought this through over and over. If I do not find a way of selling more designs, we shall have to move from this place. And then, for we shall have nothing. At oh. least by selling this brooch, I should have enough money to complete my workshop. We do not have time. Besides, I need money to help me develop my designs. Oh, Father, perhaps if you take it to Paris, someone rich might fall in love with the design and commission you to make a new one. That way, we can keep the brooch you made for Mama and get some money to make a new one. Girls, I have come to a final decision. I shall travel to Paris to show the rose brooch that 
that I once made for your mother. Should I be unsuccessful then, I shall have to reconsider my answer to Monsieur Renard. Oh, yes, do. I always said you were too hasty in your dismissal of his offer. Some girls don't realize how lucky they are. Why, we could be dressing in beautiful new gowns by now. The party season is in a couple of weeks, and I have yet to decide what to wear. In fact, I dread to think about it. Let me assure you, darling, that is the last thing I intend. Hopefully, I shall sell the brooch and return with money. And you, beauty, is there anything I can bring you from Paris? No, thank you, Father. I can't think of anything I need. Well, actually, I can think of one thing that always goes well with my ball gown. A rose. A rose from Paris. A rose? At this time of year? If I have to ask for something impossible, then I wish only that you return safely. I fear I shall have to wear last year's dress, and if I have to do that, I shall simply die. Bless her. Why, what a charming notion. And of course, we too look forward to your speedy return. Now remember, I shall be gone a week. Should either Monsieur Renard or his assistant come by for me within that time, be sure to let them in, show them your hospitality. Well, ride safely. And wrap up warm. It's a long ride into town, and the snow is thick on the ground. Be careful not to push Bijou too hard. Be sure not to lose the brooch. Are you sure it's safe there? Quite sure. It's fastened as tight as it could be. Besides, no one knows I am traveling today, and you know the woods around here are always deserted at this time of the year. What's this? Going out for a ride? Most unusual in this bitter weather. It is a dirt. Mm -hmm. And to think you are traveling in the snow, where things are so easily lost. again, I see, monsieur. Well, what have you got for me this time? Come, hand me your valuables. Not you again. But, but, I have nothing to give. You took everything from me last time. Then what, I tell, is that? Give me your brooch. I know someone on whom it would look far more attractive. <laughs> But this is my last piece of jewelry. You have already stolen my yes, life. Yes, and I want this piece as well. done my bidding. Well, Monsieur Renard, Monsieur Duboisor lost his footing, so when I shot at him, I hit him in the shoulder. He will be dead for sure in a few hours from now. No, no, no. I want him dead now, not injured. <laughs> <laughs> 
How am I to continue selling his jewelry? I want to sell it quickly throughout Paris. It is becoming increasingly difficult to use the back of my shop to keep the stolen jewelry secretly stored. No, death is the only way. Uh, but his horse bolted, and I could not keep up with him. But he stands no chance of finding his way from the woods now that it is dark. No, that is not good enough. Go, go and find him. I managed to get this from him before his horse galloped off. Hmm. <laughs> not bad, not bad at all. A fine piece indeed. Perhaps even his best. But it is no good to us unless Dubois is dead. Do not come back before you have done what I asked of you this morning. Whatever has happened to you, you poor soul. Quickly, take him to the guest room. We must tend his wound and give him something to eat. Uh, bring me some boiling water and some of the broth I have on the stove. Oh, he looks exhausted. to you, ladies. I have come here today as I wish to speak with your sister, Beauty. Is she in? No, she is out for a walk. But now that you are here, do stay and have some tea with us. May I offer you a cake, Monsieur Renard? Beauty, I mean, our housekeeper makes them, you know. Do try one. Hmm? Is there anything we can do? Uh, no. I was merely passing by and thought I would call in to see how your family is. I really haven't spent enough time with you all, and I would like to make amends. Well, as family, I feel it only my duty to see that things are not too hard in your time of need. I know your father worked long and hard to build up the business, and it is such a shame that it was all for nothing. Well, actually, our father has gone to Paris to show a piece of his jewelry. Uh, really? Oh, I do wish him all the luck. What is that? It sounds like someone singing. No, it couldn't be. No one else lives around here. Beauty, then? Goodness, no. She will be gone for hours. No, that's the call of the winter pigeon. Would you like another For cake? some more tea? No, thank you. I was just going to take a look at the bird. Oh, you won't be able to see it. It's white and uh, camouflaged in the snow. Well, I really should be thinking of leaving. I must be getting on.
look at the time. This is one of the pieces of jewelry taken from father by the highwayman. It's father's initials on the back. CDB. Well, really, I must be off. Oh, Monsieur Renard. Monsieur Renard, don't forget this. <clears throat> you know, it's funny. It's been such a long time since father was in Paris showing his jewelry. I'm sure he is so looking forward to starting work again. I do hope he will have some success. Do you think he will, Monsieur Renard? Certainly. I'm sure he will. Good. Oh, I'm pleased you think so. Hmm, this must be yours. Mm. Well, thank you. I believe it must be. Mm. Madame Bombeck, your kindness and gentleness have been much appreciated. Without your care, I fear I would have died. You have a very special gift with people. Thank you. You must pass on my gratitude to my generous host. Oh, that would be impossible. The master is away. But he would be happy to know that you have had a pleasant stay. His heart is truly very large. Yes, it is. But I must get back to my family. Oh, certainly. Your horse is rested and is awaiting you. A stable boy will be there should you need anything else. Thank you, and thank you again for all you have done. I hope I shall one day be able to return to repay you and your master for your kindness. bring something back for your sisters, but I'm blessed with the fortune of accomplishing the gift which you have asked for. Is this the way you repay my hospitality? I, the master of the house, have my people not shown you enough generosity? Must you now take more? <laughs> Has their kindness not been enough? Have they not dressed you in fine enough clothes that you wish to decorate yourself still further with my rose? Oh, no. No. The rose is not for me to wear. It is for my daughter, Beauty. She asked that I might return from Paris with the gift of a rose. I have been gone over a week. I fear she may be worried. I have been unable to return with anything from my other daughters. The roses were so beautiful that I could not help but think of beauty. Your tales of woe do not bear weight with me. Madame Bonbeck could have given you anything you wished at the house, and yet you chose to go behind her back and take what you had not asked for. For the greed you have shown, I have no choice but to punish you. Please, kind sir, I beseech you to spare me. I am already late in my return to my family. They will be worried. I had no thoughts of what I was doing when I took the rose. I was merely thinking of my youngest daughter. Your misfortune does not justify your taking from my garden. You must repair the damage you have done. Come follow me so that I may take something of yours to replace the ropes.
Lord Prey is the name of the youngest. Beauty. She has been called that since she was a child. I have chosen what it is I am to take. I wish for your youngest daughter, the one you call Beauty, to come and live no, with me here. never. I, I couldn't. She is my most precious. I could not do such a thing. Your fate will be even worse if you do not agree to my terms. Should you refuse my wish, I shall be forced to reconsider my punishment to you. You wish to put your family through the anguish of your not returning. But, but she has never harmed anyone. Her kindness. Enough! I have asked you for only one thing. When you have taken so much, do you deny me that one thing when it could cost you so dearly? No, I merely wished to suggest that you could take something else. She is blameless. She will not be harmed. I can promise you that. I wish only for her company. She will have anything she may desire. This will be her home to do with as she pleases. I understand the predicament you have found yourself in. Take these jewels and gifts for your family so that they may be more comfortable. And give this map to your daughter Beauty so that she may find her way back. Walk through the mirror and you will find yourself back home. Monsieur, do you really believe I would sacrifice my daughter for my own worthless life and some precious jewels? Go now, while you still can! Do you have everything? Do you have the map? We'll show you the way there. Oh, yes. Ride safely and beware of the woods. Bye, Beauty. Be sure to tell the Master about us here. <laughs> Cousin Charles, why you are out and about early on such a cold and wintry day? And yourself, did you come here on business? Yes, actually I came here to inquire if you had considered my offer. I really would so much like for us to work together. Monsieur Renard, much as I would now wish to take you up on your offer, I cannot. Hmm? Cannot? For whatever reason. As I recall, your offer was made on the condition that beauty became your bride. Yes, and a splendid idea that is, too. Well, I now agree. But beauty has been called away to look after an ailing aunt. She may not return for some time. On her way? But, but, but she was promised to me. Who am I to marry now? Oh, this is not good. Where has she gone? I must go after her. Oh, no, that would be impossible. Perhaps I can work for you in the meantime. You can pay me when we sell some of the jewelry. No, that will not do. My offer remains the same. If beauty agrees to be my bride, then I can offer you the position I spoke of. But until then, I cannot give you a place in the company. I must bid you farewell now. Contact me when duty has returned, and then and only then can we discuss business.
According to this map, we should be nearly there. I don't know where else we can go from here. Hello, who are you? We're the Garden Keepers. Welcome to our humble home. Well, I must say, you do have a beautiful garden. Do you look after it yourselves? Yes, we take care of the garden. And Madame Bombeck looks after the castle. Come, follow us. Hello, beauty. We've been expecting you, or rather, we've been looking forward to your coming to stay with us. I hope the ride wasn't too long. Oh, no, not at all. The map was a great help. I didn't get lost. Oh, what a wonderful place you live in. Why, thank you. But let's get you settled into your room, and then you can look around. Feel free to go wherever you wish, Help yourself to anything you fancy. The only thing I asked you is not to pick any of the roses from the garden. Oh, come now, child. I meant nothing by that comment. One day I am sure that things which seem so difficult to understand will become clearer. You must not worry about it now. I'm already so homesick, and I feel so lonely, too. Please, darling beauty, wipe away that tear. What you are afraid of is not what you should fear. Gifts of enchantment are here to bring you cheer. Whatever you may wish for, look and it will appear. How strange. Everything is so magical and so beautiful.
What is it, Rodo? Why is there all this need for noise? Monsieur Renard, you have to believe me when I say it was a huge, hairy beast. He had long dripping fangs, and his clothes were wrapped around my neck, and he was just about to eat me. Rodon, Rodon, why do you insist on telling such tall stories? Are you deliberately trying to annoy me? Rodon, behave yourself. Pick yourself up off the floor. Act like the man you're supposed to be. What if a neighbor was passing? Oh, forgive me, but I am unable to contain myself. Rodon, I cannot believe your unlikely story. And do stop spitting! It is a filthy habit. Deal with it, Rodon. Now, tell me about beauty. Has she been kidnapped by this beast? I was assured she had gone to visit a sick aunt. Are you sure your eyes are not mistaking this beast for beauty's aunt? Come to think of it, I will not have you making fun of beauty's family. Soon, her family will be part of my family. Enough. I shall go and see Beauty myself and speak with this innocent aunt. Go, Rodon. I cannot bear the sight of you anymore. Good evening, Beauty. How has your day been? Very good, thank you. You have a beautiful castle and gardens. Why, thank you, child. We all tried to keep everything looking its best. The master is very fussy about keeping everything in order. But you must be hungry. I've prepared dinner. The master asked if he could have the pleasure of joining you tonight. Oh, don't be afraid. The master is excellent company. But, but my father said I was to come here to meet the master. A frightful beast. Oh, my goodness. I hadn't thought of what your father must have told you about the master. It was a very unfortunate situation, one which, in time, you may come to understand a little better. How do you mean? Well, it's a long story, one which the master will explain to you in his own time. But you must be patient with him. He is good and kind. As with everyone, Beauty, you must look beneath the surface to see the truth about them. <gasps> no matter what their appearance, you will especially learn that of the Master. Come, let's get you freshened up and dressed for dinner. you will enjoy yourself. Feel free to take whatever you desire. This place is your home and you may do as you wish here. I shall find it hard to make this place my home. Oh? Why is that? Because for all its grandeur, it is not where I would choose to live. But could your father's home offer you what I can offer you here? The grounds in which I live, the rooms filled with such delights. Have you ever seen anywhere as beautiful as this? Oh, I do not deny that. Your castle is the most exciting place I have been to, but I would not wish to be here, but for the fact that you have ordered it to be so. <sighs> Silence! I will not have you speaking in such a way. This place is your home now, not where you lived before. Your father took something from me that cannot be replaced. His greed has cost me greatly. Oh, no, no. You misunderstand. My father is the gentlest, 
kindest person there is. He would not take from greed or envy. He took your rose because of its beauty. Ah, so because of its grace and elegance, your father wanted to possess it. And yet by plucking the rose, he has denied life to the very thing he admired. Tell me, was your father planning to show his blue rose as well as his jewelry? Answer me that! Why must you twist the gift my father made of your rose? You are surrounded by beautiful things, and yet you insist on making everything sound ugly. I'm sorry you feel that way. In the past, this castle knew much laughter and happiness, and I had hoped you might return some of that to it. I know. I will show you around the castle, and then you will be too busy to miss your father. Your offer is kind, but I do not feel like company. You wish to be alone. But I can offer you my company and entertainment. Do not be sad, little beauty. You will come to love this place, and one day, perhaps, you will come to see my home as your home. Tonight, I shall take you to the ballroom. There you can play the piano. I know you play rather well. <laughs> Beauty, beauty, beauty. Did you sleep well? Yes, thank you. The master has always loved this room. It has the best view of the grounds. Now, I've brought you some breakfast, so be sure you eat it all up. You're such a slight thing. You should eat more. I haven't eaten so much in months, and you are such a good cook. The master has requested the pleasure of your company in the gardens, so you must finish your breakfast and dress quickly so as not to keep him waiting. The master's time is very precious. What is it, child? Are you not feeling well? Oh, no. I feel perfectly healthy. I was just thinking about the dream I had. Oh? And what dream might that be? Well, since I've been here, I've been having the same dream about a handsome prince. Oh, Madame Bombeck, he's so attractive. He has dark hair and brown eyes and such a beautiful smile. And in my dream, we dance and then we kiss. Oh, it's so romantic. It's no wonder I keep dreaming about him. Perhaps it's because you know him. Oh, no. No. I don't know any princes. Well, you never know. Perhaps you are acquainted with the prince, but aren't aware of it. Things are not always what they seem. Beauty, I asked you to come for a walk with me because I have something to ask you. Well, Beauty, it's like this. I wanted to have a word with you about... Are you happy here, Beauty? Yes, of course. You know I want for nothing. Yes, 
But that's not quite what I mean. I... I mean, when I asked you here for a walk, I did so with the intention of... <laughs> what is it? Why have you called me here? Surely you, of all people, can tell me what it is that's troubling you. Well, Beauty, I have asked you here today because I would like to ask if... you would marry me. Oh, my. I couldn't possibly. Beauty. Oh, um, I don't mean to be so quick in my response. It's just that I... I hadn't thought about marriage. Perhaps you hadn't thought about marriage yet, but you should. You will have to someday. However, I fear your heart has already been captured. Yes, but not that it shall come to much. The man I am in love with lives only in my dreams. But I must be honest with you. I could only marry you if I loved you. And much as I have become fond of you, I do not love you. Come, let's not think of such foolish things as love. What are you looking at, child? Ah, the master, hard at work with his roses. He spends so much time with his roses, he must love them so. I worry sometimes that he loves his roses more than he loves life. Oh, Beauty, has the master not explained why that might seem? No, no, he hasn't. Well, I feel you are now ready to understand more. Now, let me see. How would be best to explain? You see, Beauty, when a rose on one of his bushes dies, it means the master's life is shortened by one month. So, when your unsuspecting father took a rose from the master's garden, he accidentally reduced the life of the master. My goodness! Why is that? Oh, now, that's not for me to say. I've told you more than enough already. You will learn in your own time, or the master will tell you. But it also works the other way. Should the master fall ill, the roses will fall and die. So that's why he spends so much time with his roses. What's troubling you, beauty? You have not been your usual self of late. Well, if the truth be known, I wish to see my father again. I have missed him and my sisters terribly. Oh, if only I could see his face again. Do you wish only to see him? Oh, yes, only to see that he is well and happy. Well, should that be all you wish, then I can oblige. Mind, it shall only be to see him, not to speak to him. You must not ask more. Oh, I promise. I shall be grateful to see him. I would not ask for more than that. Look deep into the mirror, beauty. It will show you all you wish to see. Ask the mirror what you would like it to show you. My family. Oh my, they look so beautiful. They must have been to the squire's ball that was held last weekend. But I can't see my father. Surely he can't be at another jewelry show. He has no more jewelry to display. Ask the mirror to show you where your father is if you want to see him. Please, mirror, could you now show me my father? Good morning. Is it possible to speak to Monsieur Renard or his assistant, Monsieur Rolladon? Um, they are not here at the moment. Can I inquire as to when they will return? Certainly. Well, perhaps you could inform me as to when would be a good time to catch them. Well, of course, it's dependent on so many factors. But I would imagine the jewellery fair will finish in a few days' time. It is a very prestigious fair, you know, in Paris. Really? 
Oh, my cousin must be doing well for himself. I do wish him all the best. I came here, actually, in the hope that I could discuss some business with him. Oh, yes. I know my cousin is a very talented businessman, but I never knew he could design jewelry. <clears throat> in Paris, they are heralding him as the greatest discovery yet. If you wait a moment, I'll show you some of his work. We have to keep it in a secret cupboard in the back room. His designs are so very precious. I can tell from that look in your eyes that you are impressed, sir. And you are right to be so. It is truly a magnificent piece of work. <laughs> no doubt you would like to hold the brooch so that you can admire it in closer range. I know my cousin is a very talented businessman, but I never knew he could design your... Oh, yes. He is an absolute marvel. His work is well known throughout the whole of the... And since his recent collection, the company has been making substantial sales. But this work I have here must be his finest work yet. This piece, why, even a layman like yourself, sir, can appreciate its elegance throughout. This is the work of a genius. You will not find as fine a craftsman as Monsieur Renard in all of our land. Of that, I can assure you. Are you all right, sir? Oh, goodness, whatever can be the matter? Uh, I'll be all right in a minute or two. Please excuse me. Oh, dear beast, could I not return to look after my father while he is ill? I only wish to see that he recovers and becomes fit again. If you walk through the mirror, you will find yourself home. Now go. Beauty, wherever have you come from? I've come to see that you are well. That beast has let you come home? No, father, but he's let me come to look after you while you are ill. I have missed you so much. Oh, you've come back. What was the beast like? We can tell by your dress that you certainly haven't been working for him. The beast has been very kind to me. The ring was a gift, so that I might be able to return to his castle. I do believe Father has been quite unfair to send Beauty to the castle. It is quite plain to me that this beast is considerably wealthy. Oh, I'm quite in agreement with you, dear. Being the eldest, I do think I should have been consulted in the decision to send Beauty. And quite frankly, I feel that I would have been more suited to this alleged beast. Well, from what Beauty has said to me, it sounds as if this beast is quite gentlemanly. I mean, Beauty has not been particularly detailed about his appearance. But to be honest, if he comes from such wealth, who cares what he looks like? It's just typical of Father to favor Beauty over us. At my age, I should have been the first choice to stay at this castle, not Beauty. Well, did Beauty not say that it was the ring that could transport her to the castle? Yes. Well then, surely it will transport us to the castle. When the time comes for Beauty to return, we should take the ring and go to the castle ourselves. The beast is sure to take one of us in Beauty's place. But of course! He will never bother coming here to retrieve Beauty if we arrive at the castle. And anyway, if we take the ring, Beauty will have no way of following us. Stop fidgeting. I told you I should have worn the dress. It would have fitted me much better than you. That is of no consequence. I shall woo him with my charm. Do you have Beauty's ring? That's the most important thing.
the ring? Where is my ring? Please, take me back to the castle. You must remember the way you took to come home. You've come back, Beauty. I had hoped that you would. It's been so lonely here without you. Please don't die. Now that I realize how much you mean to me. You're the prince from my dreams. Where has the beast gone? Beauty, the beast and I are the same person, but your unselfish love has released me. Never in all my years have I met such a lazy pair. 